that if we really get this, how can we not cry tears of joy, right? And tears of a broken heart and tears of longing and tears of trembling before she, as we realize that she needs our service. Avodat Sorach Gavoa, reality needs our service. And reality needs your service. And we need each other as a band of outrageous lovers coming together as the revolutionaries, but literally as the revolutionaries. Right? What animates, if you want to get a sense of what animates, what's the feeling, right, that animates one mountain, many paths? It's not a fundamentalist religious feeling, although there's value in that, and it's not a human potential movement or new age feeling, although there's value in that, and it's not an intellectual political podcast, although there's value in that, but the feeling is revolution. Think cafe in Paris, right, or in St. Petersburg, as Marxism was spreading and Marxism was missing so many critical pieces. So it devolved into communism, which destroyed reality. But there was this moment, right? Because of course, communism is, I wanna get this straight with you because <clears throat> this is gonna be the piece we're gonna talk about today. Communism is utopianism sans first principles. Does everyone get that? Communism is this utopian vision to actually shift and take responsibility. It's a cosmocentric vision, right? It's a cosmocentric vision. But what is it missing? Right, it's missing first principles, right? It's missing first principles, right? Right, and by the way, I think I gotta get this right. Oh my God, Xochitl, Xochitl, do I got that right now? Xochitl, do I got that? Yes, Xochitl, do we got that right? That's the most exciting thing happening today. Forget about saving the world, we got it right. Oh my God, yes. Tom, brother, we got it right. And getting a name right is everything, right? And that's exactly what communism didn't understand. Communism didn't understand that every person's an irreducible unique self, that reality is having a societal experience, right? And that getting societal's name right really matters because we need societal and we can't do it without her. Reality needs your service. And the name of the divine in the deepest reading of the interior sciences is the name of every being that ever was, is, or will be inscribed together in the name of God. And if one name is missing from the name of God, the name of God has no power, right? We're all part of the divine name, it's so deep. That's a first principle and a first value of cosmos. Communism was utopianism, right? It's the move to an actual cosmocentric consciousness. I'm gonna, right? I'm gonna be first world centric. I'm gonna feel the whole world and I'm gonna feel, right? That the whole world, right? Needs to be changed and I'm responsible to change it. And I'm gonna take responsibility for the whole thing. That's called utopianism. That's gorgeous. But communism was utopianism, sans first principles and first values. So we're at a moment today where we need to take responsibility for the whole thing. If you wanna know the energy animating, what's the energy animating one mountain, many paths? Right? The energy is on the one hand, we're a band of outrageous lovers. And we actually understand that we live in a world of outrageous pain. And the only response to outrageous pain is outrageous love. And we live in a world of outrageous beauty. And the only response to outrageous beauty is outrageous love. And outrageous love is not ordinary love. Outrageous love is not mere human sentiment, right? Outrageous love is not a strategy between two separate self egos. Outrageous love is the current of reality itself. It's the heart of existence itself. Outrageous love is the eros. Reality is eros and eros has expressions as intimacy and as desire and as uniqueness, radical uniqueness and as creativity and as personhood. These are first principles and first values of cosmos that evolve from matter to life to mind to the human world, and then they evolve to the human world. So these are not just first principles and first values, these are evolving first principles and first values. 
and to articulate these first principles and first values and to bring them together with a utopian vision, meaning a vision of moving from homo sapien, the old vision of the human being, which itself has been downgraded and degraded. We've begun to understand the human being as this hyper small, separate self engaged in rivalrous conflict, governed by a win-lose metrics. The narrative, the plot line is a success story. That's become the animating narrative and story. And that animating narrative and story is the source of the existential risk to our very humanity, to the death, to cause the death right, of humanity through the extraction model, through the exponential growth curves, through the widening gap of inequity between haves and have nots, through rogue actors with access to exponential tech, right? A whole list of issues which then contribute to climate change, which then contribute to the nuclear threat, et cetera, et cetera. And so this, this false narrative, this false story, the story of the old human and the old humanity, right? This broken homo sapien, right, is actually the root cause of existential risk, which is literally the death of, of humanity. And, and, right, this failure of narrative is leading to not just the death of humanity, which is the first form of existential risk, but the death of our humanity, which is the second form, right? Not that human beings will disappear, but we'll stop being human as we understand human beings to be. And that's the direction we're moving in. And so what we're doing is who are we, right? We are a band of outrageous lovers who are revolutionaries, right? And the energy that animates us, right? Is think again, back to our cafe in Paris or in St. Petersburg, it's Marxism. But as we started, Marxism is without first values and first principles. Right, it, it, it part, it's part of an assumption that the cosmos is purely material and run only by the forces of the techno-economic base. And all those forces are enormously important. And Marx's insights are critically important. They're part of the story. Marx didn't understand that there's actually value in cosmos underneath the material structure of cosmos. There's value, right? And value means, wow. Right, value means first values and first principles. Value is not reducible, right? Value is not deconstructible, but actually the human being and the dignity of the individual human being has ultimate value. And you can't tinker and utopian reconstruct or remold society, right? Not in alignment with the first principles and first values of cosmos, right? That evolve and appear uniquely in us. We actually have to be in alignment with those first values and first principles. And the single most important thing we can do today is to actually reclaim them. But to reclaim them is actually not to claim something that was once clear. It's actually to evolve, to articulate a new vision of first values and first principles, because that vision's gotten lost. It's gotten lost and, and it's never been fully and appropriately articulated. We're in one mountain, many paths. Our context is revolution. And our context is this band of outrageous lovers. Every week we wanna blow our hearts open. We wanna be inspired, right? We wanna be breathed right, by love itself. We wanna be breathed by outrageous love itself. But we're not a local community church or even a, a, an international church or synagogue or mosque or secular humanist center that's coming together so that everyone can just feel good. Feeling good's wondrous. But, but we actually have a vision. It's a revolutionary vision, which is we want to actually enter into the source code of what's happening, understand it, diagnose it, because diagnosis is, is the first stage to being able to transform, to heal. So we need accurate diagnosis. And then we need to articulate the new set of memes, right? The new story, right? That actually becomes the animating plot line, right? Of a global ethos for global civilization. Because the failure of story, right, the failure of narrative of self, right, is the source of existential risk, whether that's the death of humanity or the death of our humanity, which is two forms of existential risk. So it's only evolving 
articulating a new story based on the best validated insights of pre-modern, modern, and post-modern thinking that can allow us to respond to that existential risk. Now, if you think we're excited about this, yeah, we're excited about it. I mean, excited though, not in a superficial fun way. Yes, there's enormous joy. There's joy at being able to take our seat at the table and participate directly in the evolution of culture and consciousness. Does everyone get that? Right? Like that's, that's a big sentence. There's enormous joy at being able to take our seat at the table and participate directly in the evolution of culture and consciousness. And there's also a sense of urgency, right? It's not all sweetness and light as Rudolf Alto said once. It's not all sweetness and light. There's an ecstatic urgency. So we're, we're revolutionaries. We're a band of outrageous lovers. And we wanna to come together and be radically inspired so that we'll actually take action but we can't be inspired in a superficial way. I had a, a conversation once a couple of years ago with maybe it was about four or five years ago with Tony Robbins at his house in Florida, a, a lovely man. And, you know, Tony is about kind of activating the, the state of inspiration. And I believe in that. And I, I've done that, you know, in many ways in my life in the best way I could. And, and I share that with Tony. I think Tony's doing a, a beautiful job in that. And... I said to Tony, that's in the end not going to work. It'll work for the people you do it for, which is gorgeous and, 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 and more power to you. But we can't actually heal where we are today. We can't respond right, to existential risk. We can't respond to a world of a broken source code without actually articulating a new source code. right? New memes based on first values and first principles, right, which are new narratives of identity, right? New universe story, new narrative of power, new narrative of desire, and new narrative of communion, those five, right? Universe story, narrative of identity, narrative of power, narrative of desire, narrative of communion. And so I said to him, I said, you know, the idea of unique self, which I began to explain, right, to Tony, which is not just your separate self or your power or your superpower. It's a much deeper structural idea. That idea will change the world. But that idea can save the world. Right? And that idea is not based on Tony's charism or Oriana's charism, right? Or Mark's charism, right? It's based on the charism of she moving and animating the idea itself. Charism means spirit moving through. So at the center of one mountain, many paths is the chat box. The chat box is the community. It's where we love each other. It's where we talk to each other. And at the center is the Dharma, right? The Dharma meaning the first values and first principles, right? Which are the basis of the new set of narratives that become the matrix for a global ethos, for a global civilization. And in that sense, I just wanna say, our entire system says no, for example, to the guru model. In the guru model, the guru, right? Is the person who God moves through and is the source of authority. We say utterly no to that. And we also say utterly no to the kind of San Francisco new age model. We're all just kind of getting together and talking and we're all just friends on the path. And, you know, everyone's opinions equally valid. And, and you know, and, and let's just make sure that we're, you know, listening deeply and reflecting back to each other. No, we're not doing that either. Right? There actually is, right, a dharma. And not everything is equal. Not all ideas are equal. Right? We've actually spent you know, 25, 30 years trying to work through right, and integrating right, the best set of validated insights from pre-modern, modern, and post-modern, and we're putting forth a set of ideas, and they're completely challengeable, right? but you got to challenge them, not just say, I disagree. you got to say, okay, wow, I've looked at all the theories of self, and here's seven reasons why we need to adjust it this way, and we'll adjust it in a second. So we're, we're a unique self-symphony creating this Dharma together, and anyone who wants to step in me now, I want to step in for realsies and step in and study and open my heart and practice because I, I wanna actually participate at the table and actually evolve in the source code, step on in, right? Everybody's welcome. At the center is the, this new source code, right? This evolution of the source code. And so therefore, and I'm always conflicted whenever we come to one mountain, I'm conflicted between wanting to share a beautiful story or a beautiful transmission or an insight, but, but that's not enough, right? I, right? I want to take you in 
to the depth of the source code and understand diagnostically what's broken and how we make it whole, because that's our commitment. Does that make sense, everyone? So I, want, I wanted to share with you today just kind of that, that right? Who, got, who gets that? Who gets that? Anybody get that? Who gets that? Who gets it? Just, can, you, can you feel that? All right, that's our commitment. All right, that's our commitment here. That's what we're about. And that's what we're trying to do together. So it's a very, we're in a very unique place. 